Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Friday, April 7th, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. Beza Miani volcano in the Kamchatka exploded today, ash up to 40,000 feet, affecting the aviation in the region, color code at red. But the big story, historic snow season results in the fifth structure collapse in Park City, Utah. Keep calm. It's boom time. Park City crews respond to the fifth structure collapse in just the past week after historic snow season in the state, with more challenges still on the way. From snow loads to snow melt, officials are urging caution this spring, ding ding, as the meltwater, well, is slated to be some of the most epic flooding in history. Here are the snow water equivalents. One of the biggest snow water equivalents ever recorded. 197% in the North Sierras, 238% in the Central Sierras, and 296% in the Southern Sierras. And those millions upon millions of cubic miles of water need to go somewhere, and it's down in this green valley. And her name is not Sally. That's actually the San Joaquin Valley and where Lake Tulare will be filling. Take a look at the West Side Snowtel equivalents that are not in California, also record totals in Oregon. They, have never, they haven't seen totals like this in decades. Nevada as well, Utah record totals. It's looking quite good in Colorado, and it will be an epic rafting season indeed. The coldest ocean water temperatures in decades being recorded off San Diego. That sounds chilly. UC San Diego Scripps Institution of Oceanography said a nearshore buoy in Del Mar recorded 52.25 degree water. And that is record cold. Holy macaroni beating the last record by over a degree. That's crazy. So... Cold waters off the coast as we enter spring, ding, ding. This could be part of the mix-up of the flows from La Nina to El Nino. We are in Enso neutral currently, so there is a mix-up happening in the West. Let's take a look at why there is going to be such historic flooding in the coming months. 30 atmospheric rivers slam the state of California just this season. And that is not going to help us blow it up at all. I wonder if I can click on it. There we go. So this is when atmospheric river storms hit the West Coast. Since October, more than 30 atmospheric river storms have barreled into California, including six that were strong and one considered extreme but exceptional for Oregon. And you can see the longer the strip, the more extreme or what have you. But certainly... Quite a number of atmospheric rivers slamming the West. It's complete. Before and after, dramatic photos show how these storms filled the once dry, ever dry, according to the alarmists. All this was going to dry up last year. Oops! <laughs> they were wrong. And take a look at that. May 23rd, 2021. And now... March 26, 2023. Take a look at Granite Bay in Folsom Lake. 2021 on the right, 2023 on the left. And Lake Oroville was going to dry up and everyone was going to be without water and die. Oops, probably not. <laughs> so that's just how things go when you listen to the mainstream media you listen to the lamestream scientists, and you buy into their propaganda. Now for the forecast. Fire weather concerns for the plains. Take a look. And heavy rainfall for the southeast. Snow melt and potential flooding in the northwest as well. Drier and warming temperatures will bring multiple hazards across the plains, intermontane west, and northern Rockies. For the plains, the risk of wildfires will persist through Saturday where snowpack remains, warming temperatures will result in snowmelt and possible flooding concerns increasing through the weekend. Across the southeast, locally heavy rainfall is possible through Saturday. 
Click on your county for more info. It looks like Louisiana is the big winter chicken dinner for flooding, winds in the center of the country, and flooding potential everywhere it snowed. Let's move the models through. You can see a system continuing to move through the Pacific Northwest and something tropical may be developing here in the Gulf of Mexico, albeit short-lived, but Tuesday and Wednesday could be quite interesting in the Gulf states. By Wednesday, that severe weather will move through central Florida and could be, bring heavy rain, lightning, large hail, and maybe tornadoes. So heads up on that. Let's take a look at the snowfall totals. It's looking like a spring map, certainly. Here is Saturday. That's when that event's going to happen in Wisconsin. So good luck for your weekend there. That's your Saturday event. A little bit will move through northern Michigan this weekend. Maybe some flurries in the northeast, but the biggest snow is going to be developing here in the Pacific Northwest. Washington State, Idaho. Here is your Tuesday, then your Wednesday, and then a big system develops here Thursday into Friday. And by the weekend and Saturday, we could be seeing a big event in Colorado and southern Wyoming, bringing four feet or more to many of the high elevation regions in areas that haven't seen snow of this depth. So this could be an interesting spring pattern developing. Stay tuned for updates. Now, Romania had a very cold spring and lots of snow. Iceland had its coldest March since 1979 and almost one million power one million people lose power as freezing rain hits Ontario and Quebec. Wow. Records continue to fall across the western U.S. as well. And we're over here at poweroutage.canada, and you can see it's not looking good. Quebec, now 307,000 people without power. That is a pretty good percentage of the total there. Less than 5 million in Quebec, so... A large percentage of people there without power in Quebec. 40,000 in Ontario. So those numbers have gone up. And so our hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to the people up there in Canada who are without electric. Prepared, not scared, hopefully. Now, Melbourne could have the coldest Easter in 80 years. That's eight decades and a few generations. The Easter long weekend is going to be cold, wet, and windy in Melbourne with the city currently forecast to have its coldest Easter since 1946. While Easter is still a few days away, forecast models suggest that a burst of unusually cold mid-autumn weather will hit southeastern Australia this weekend. The cold snap will be driven by a cold front lurching northwards and dragging a frigid air mass towards Australia from the Southern Ocean. Tasmania looks freezing as well, but... That doesn't mean it hasn't smashed its harvest record, which it did. The island of Tasmania has set new harvest records over the summer, and it's not a bummer. This is based on the biggest ever production in its three main winter crops, wheat, barley, and canola. Hello. So many people that are predicting grain shortages and what have you, friends of the channel, well, they may have got it wrong. Seismic update. No quakes of note, all quiet on the western front. Here you can see a 5.8 in Kamchatka, but the Bezamiani quake, or the Bezamiani eruption, probably emanating from this large quake here, the 6.5 hitting the peninsula just a few days ago on April 2nd. So no other quakes of note. We had some interplate activity in China, 5.0, and some aftershocks there, but I want to... Bring your eyes over here to Puerto Rico where there has been quite a number of quakes in recent days. So a large clustering there. Let's keep a close eye on Puerto Rico as we move towards the solar polar reversal. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Saban Kaya, 22,000 feet. Nothing much else happening. Bezamiani now still lingering ash to 36,000 feet in the last report. Shivalush to 13. Semaru and... Here is the Bezamiani 40,000 foot plume alert also today. And so, and there's the boom, Bezamiani, massive eruption, sent ash up to 12 kilometers initially. And then the ash cloud went to 40,000 feet. That's 40 kilometers. And aviation color code was raised to red, which has affected air travel, not that there's much in that region, but certainly some. A major eruption appeared at the volcano early this morning at 538 local time. 
I got up just moments after it and didn't report on it because it's not that significant. VEI2 perhaps, maybe just, yeah, VEI2. And it's in such a remote region. As you can see, we could only get two different shots of such a spectacular quake. Now, the spectacular gray ash abundant plume rose 10 to 12 kilometers altitude and extended 20 kilometers to the southeast of the volcano. An impressive satellite image acquired from the European Space Agency Sentinel-2 portrays the significant plume. Where'd we go there? Traces affecting the nearest eastern shore tephra deposits. So this went a far distance. Let's take a look at that. Yeah. For dozens of miles, covering everything in ash. So quite a big boom indeed coming from Bezamiani. Hello. And we are at the solar polar reversal as we are now also ha happening live. We are having a, a large solar flare right now. Not really. Okay. Okay. It maxed out at M2.9. So at M2.9, nothing significant, but live is pretty spectacular. Probably coming from this active region 3272, but stay tuned for all the updates as, well, it's happening now. This flare is happening now. Global D layer absorption. There is a radio blackout that is currently happening over much of... Australia, I believe. Let's take a look. Yeah, actually in the middle of the nowhere here in Western Pacific, Indonesia and a radio blackout specifically, and some lingering effects on Kamchatka all the way down through China, um, East Asia, and Australia currently in radio blackout. Amazing. So we'll have updates in the morning on what's going on there with the minor M flare. Nothing significant. The sun is blank, for goodness sakes, and we are at solar max. We should be seeing much more activity than this. As the solar polar fields are reversing now, all of the fields are converging in just a few months on the end game, which is solar max. And then it's all downhill from there. But during solar max and these solar polar field reversals here, here and here in the last several cycles, we have large earthquakes, eight magnitude or better. So take heed and take warning. Be prepared, not scared. An ancient ocean floor has landed next to Earth's core, according to a study. Hey, buddy. Now, this study is pretty cool, and I wanted to bring it to your attention, simply because if you hover your cursor over it, look at the Earth. It gets bigger there. It's like it's a heartbeat. Boom, 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 boom. Anyway... An ancient ocean floor has landed next to the Earth's core, according to a team of scientists. Now, everyone is familiar with the concept of finding sunken treasure on the ocean floor and plate tectonics, probably. Now, what they're saying is plate tectonics may cause massive portions of plates to sink all the way down towards the core, past the core mantle boundary. That's pretty interesting. When geoscientist Samantha Hansen and her team from the University of Alabama set up 15 seismographs in Antarctica in 2012, they were interested in using waves from the Earth around the planet to image mountains that largely lay buried beneath the ice. While that research was going on, which lasted three years, was successful, it led to several papers. The data showed unusual energies showing up after the waves from the earthquakes passed through the core mantle boundary. CMB. This led Hansen and the colleagues to conduct further investigations. Now, the core mantle boundary is found about 2,000 miles below the surface of the Earth. Uh, and there, the research team found that seismic waves slowed down when they hit a certain layer that, while measuring about 3 to 25 miles thick, is extremely thin in terms of planetary composition. The slowing of the waves through this area characterized is an ultra-low velocity zone. Now, analyzing thousands of seismic recordings from Antarctica, the high-definition imaging method found this anomalous zone of material at the CMB. And what they concluded was pretty astounding. That ocean plate that goes underneath the subduction zone can make its way all the way to the core. Here in this picture, here's the downgoing slab, gets melted at the core mantle boundary and comes back up as a plume. And that is a boom. 
a huge conveyor belt boom. Indeed. Now twinkling stars are fueling interstellar dust. Yeah, the twinkling is because they're blowing up. Like, they're blowing off shells or something. And that's causing the luminosity to flicker. One of the many different kinds of stars, asymptomatic giant branch or AGB stars, usually slightly larger and older than our own, are known to produce interstellar dust. Dusty AGBs are particularly prominent producers of this dust. And here's an artist's impression of an asymptotic giant branch star. <laughs> so... What they're saying here is interesting because it may mean that only stars that blow this dust out, well, stars with variable luminosity, they may be the only stars that can influence life in a solar system because they provide all the building blocks for it. Now, what that means is that our star probably blows dust out occasionally. And now this is a theory by many, including... Ben Davidson over at Suspicious Observers. We don't believe his hypothesis one bit um, because if any of that scenario were to happen, everything would be dead on Earth and mass extinctions would be much more often, and they're not. They happen over tens of millions of years, typically. So, And we have such biodiversity on Earth, and Earth has been quite biodiverse for hundreds of millions of years, going back to the Burgess Shale Explosion, that our star cannot be that variable, just based on Occam's razor, facts and logic. But our star may produce super flares that produce, or maybe back in geologic history, our, our star exploded more often with large dust shells, perhaps. But that doesn't seem to be the case in recent memory. Anyway, our star is much younger and different than the stars described in this paper, so don't let them fool you. Now, have you ever heard they actually stopped Niagara Falls? Here's what Niagara Falls looked like when it was turned off for the first time in 12,000 years. Now, it was turned off back then because it was an ice age and it was frozen and it didn't flow. But they actually diverted half of the Niagara Falls over to this region when they were worried about these boulders here in front. They thought they may pile up so high that they would turn the falls into a rapid instead of a waterfall, and they were going to go in there and remove some boulders. Yeah, this is genius scientists. What they determined was the boulders are actually holding up the cliff. Who knew? Now you do. <laughs> and that's a boom to engineering. Now, geology experts find evidence of dual mass extinctions 260 million years ago. This is before the age of the dinosaurs and what was once thought to be one massive mass extinction around 260 million years ago has now been delineated into two episodes of massive volcanic activity three million years apart. It's a double whammy, a one-two punch, ending 60 to 75% of all animals in a hellish nightmare of brimstone and fire. Well, enough of the funeral pyre. If you want to ask Diamond a question, David Mariello, a.k.a. Diamond, that's me. Join the conversation over at 5.me backslash diamond, where 52 members are now enjoying the opportunity to ask me anything they want and get an answer. Not only that, if you become a premium member, we're going to have a monthly live one-on-one -on -one stream yard, live stream, where you can interact with me live for over an hour. We just had our first one tonight, and guess what? No one showed up. That's quite interesting because they all said they'd be there. We're going to try to do it again tomorrow at 11 a.m. Mountain Time on the link I provided. So if you're a premium member and I haven't emailed you, maybe you just joined in the last few days, you'll get on in on in the next one. And we what we do is we email all the premium members and see when the best time to do the live stream is. And we hope you all join us for this new opportunity to connect with me directly in a private way, or just ask me any question here on the platform. It's free. 
and you can update your membership from free to all access for just eight bucks a month. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I hope you got something out of the video. Please hit the thumbs up. It helps with the Al Gore rhythm. Also, share this on your social media as we've been shadow banned for the last four and a half years. Be safe. We love you.